all right so today i have this mft link uhf system and it's a 16 channel uhf system with a diversity receiver which will basically allow me to extend the range of my rc transmitter so that way i can drive further with my fpv setup now i've already opened the box and i've had a look at the components and i've made a few changes so i'll be addressing that in this video and i will be testing the range of this uhf system so make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for the next videos so that we don't miss out and there are hardly any videos of this UHF system so hopefully I can cover the system well and share it with you all so in the box what we get is the transmitter itself so this is a 400 to 800 milliwatt transmitter it has a switch over here for low and high power mode the low mode is at 400 milliwatts and the high is at 800 milliwatts then there's a LED indicator over here then we have the bind and fail safe button and then we have the antenna connection so this is the antenna that's included and it's a SMA connector antenna now this is the version 1 of the transmitter there's also a version 2 and the only difference is the outer shell the version 2 has a inbuilt fan and the case has a heat shrinks on it so it helps with the heat dissipation but the case on this is also made of metal so I'm pretty sure this will also dissipate heat very well and at the bottom we have the connections so this is the RC port then we have head tracker USB and external or extension so the first port is where we will connect our radio if required you can use the second port as well and this is the receiver as you can see that it has two antenna ports so this is a diversity receiver this is the bind button and it's got eight channels and it also has a USB port so you can update the firmware for both the transmitter and the receiver the antennas for this are also SMA so and the price of this UHF system is about $150 I got it for $155 or so and you can find this on Amazon, eBay or Aliexpress for about $140 to $160 so this is one of the budget UHF system that you can find out there but this is something which was introduced way back about five or seven years ago so so that's the receiver and so the frequency band of the system is from 410 megahertz to 510 megahertz and the default frequency is set to 431 to 441 megahertz but you can change the settings by connecting this to the computer but you have to make sure that the frequency on the transmitter and receiver is the same otherwise they won't bind and these are the wires that are included to connect your RC transmitter to the UHF transmitter so so depending on what radio you have you'll have to choose the appropriate connection so this is the JR type connection then there's this 4 pin Molex connector on each side and this is what I will be using for my radio so it's got 4 pin Molex connector at one end and I've connected a Dean's connector for the power and there's a 3.5 mm jack that I will connect to my radio which outputs PPM signal you can also connect this to your DSC port which is the trainer port so you'll have to make sure that your transmitter has an external port in order to attach a UHF system to it now this wire by default is about 15 centimeters in length so I've extended this so I'll connect the transmitter to my radio so I'll connect the wire to the first port and, and as you must have noticed that in my previous videos I demonstrated how to use the PPM port on the Dumbo RC radio which is over here so I'll simply connect this to my radio you can also use the DSC port like this which is most commonly seen on Kyosho radios and now I'll install the receiver on my Savage Flux so I've connected the receiver to my Savage Flux so all I have to do is power up the ESC and turn on my radio so I've connected the transmitter to my radio all I have to do is just power up the transmitter so you can power up the transmitter by using a 2S or a 3S LiPo battery the working voltage is from 7 to 16 volts and at 400 milliwatts which is at low power the required current is at 180 milliamps and at high power it's 360 milliamps so right now the switch is at low position
and I'll turn on the car. And I'll turn on the radio as well. So. so the transmitter has been connected to the car successfully and you can see that there are two LED lights on the receiver one is blue and the other is red so the blue light indicates that the receiver is using only one antenna and if it's using the red it's the second antenna and I've upgraded the firmware on the receiver and transmitter so to enable fail safe make sure that your trim levels are all at zero and simply hold this bind fail safe button for three seconds and once you hear the beep just release the button and this is the low and high power switch so now it's at 800 milliwatts and now it's at 400 milliwatts so and it's a good idea to recalibrate the controller on the ESC once you connect this UHF system so that's all I have to share in this video make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next videos where I will be testing the range of this UHF system and see how reliable it is and how far I can go and if it's really good then I would definitely suggest you to get this as well because this is one of the budget UHF system that you can buy and that works on 433 MHz band I'm looking forward to test this and share it with you all so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one